Hello. Production possibility frontiers. They're, they're actually quite simple, but they cause people all kinds of problems. So let's look at those. Production possibility frontiers represent the uh, potential output of an economy. Every point on this curve represents a combination of goods. Let's call them capital goods and consumer goods. In other words, all potential goods produced by an economy, given its limited resources of land, labour and capital. Every point on this curve represents a combination of some quantity of capital goods and some quantity of consumer goods that can be made, given the existing resources, given the current state of technology. For instance, if all resources were devoted into the production of just consume, consumer goods and no capital goods, then the limit, the, the potential that could be made is that quantity. And of course, simultaneously, zero capital goods. Alternatively, if all resources were devoted into the production of capital goods, that quantity, no more, could be made with the given resources, but there'd be no consumer goods. Of course, most likely is that some combination of capital and consumer goods will be made, perhaps this combination, which represents this quantity of capital goods, and simultaneously, this quantity of consumer goods being made in an economy with a given set of resources. Now, perhaps more likely is that, in fact, not all resources get used. There is unemployment in a society. And perhaps only a combination of capital and consumer goods, say, let's call this A, is being made with quantity A, capital goods, quantity a here of consumer goods, and this would represent an output for this economy which is beneath their potential. Clearly there's unemployment or underemployment in this economy and they could do better with their existing resources. Combinations of goods outside the PPF, perhaps this combination B, where this quantity of capital goods and this quantity of consumer goods this is just impossible with given resources. And perhaps in the future it will be possible if new resources, if there is more land, more labour, more capital, or better use of land, labour and capital, but given the current state of technology and the current resources, the combination of goods B is not possible. Okay, now let's take this a little further and explore the concept of opportunity cost, which arises in PPFs. One moment. So, let's start afresh. We'll remain with the axes of capital and consumer goods because the thing is that these two axes really should uh, encompass all potential goods in an economy. Sometimes you'll see in textbooks bread and milk, but there has to be an economy where only bread and milk is, is, are the only goods that can be made. I, I think it's a bit more realistic to discuss a PPFs in terms of capital goods and consumer goods. So, here we are. A PPF which describes a country's potential output for capital and consumer goods, given its resources. Now let's say that the country is currently producing at point A. It's being very efficient because it's on the PPF, and it's producing this quantity of capital goods and this quantity of consumer goods. Let's put some numbers on this. Let's say that this is 600 capital goods. Simultaneously, some resources are being used to produce consumer goods. Let's say that's 1,000 consumer goods. Let's say that they decide that this is not enough consumer goods. They want more consumer goods in this society. So they want to produce 1,500 consumer goods. They can do it, but they're going to have to take some resources away from produce, producing capital goods. And we can see that the increase of 500 consumer goods from 1,000 to 1,500 is going to create an opportunity cost, let's say this could be about 400, 200 capital goods. Let's call this point B. So as the economy has redistributed its resources, it's taken some resources out of making capital goods, some land, some labour, some capital, and is now using them to make more consumer goods. 
They've moved round their PPF from A to B. And the opportunity cost of the extra 500 consumer goods was 200 lost capital goods. Okay? Now, we can't make value jump. A further technical point. I'm going to remain with these points A and B. And I told you that at point A, where they made 1,000 consumer and 600 capital, and when they moved to point B, where they made 1,500 consumer goods, 400 capital goods, there was opportunity cost. But let me point something out to you. The opportunity cost of these 500 consumer goods was lost 200 capital goods. But were they to create another point, let's call this point now C, and they took consumer good production up to 2,000, the limit, they'd have to give up all of these capital goods. They would have no capital goods. Note that the opportunity cost of a further increase in consumer goods, a further 500, is a bigger opportunity cost now. What we're seeing is that opportunity cost does not remain the same, and that's because of the curvature of the PPF. As we step across another 500, more and more capital goods are having to be sacrificed. You can look at this mathematically and you can say that because the gradient is steepening, with one equal step along the x-axis, we take a bigger step down the y-axis. It's the curvature of the PPF that is causing this to happen. Were this PPF to be linear, you would get a constant opportunity cost. With every step across to increase consumer good production, there would be the same opportunity cost of capital goods. Because the constant gradient means that the opportunity cost is constant. Okay, just a couple more points to pick out on PPFs, and that is the idea that, uh, I think I better just scrub this whole thing, the idea that PPFs can shift. Now, PPFs will shift if there's a change in the uh, availability of resources, if there's a change in the level of technology, either in a particular industry or in the entire uh, economy. Let's change the equation slightly. Let's say that this is an economy that can only produce steel or bread. And let's work with this PPF. It's a curved PPF. It's realistic. Um, and if, of course, they devote all their production to steel, they can make this much. If they produce only bread, they can produce this much. A PPF can shift. Were this country to suffer some terrible natural disaster, an earthquake that ruined steel mills and bread factories, um, a war which destroyed, uh, destroyed again capital making these two products, we might expect the PPF to shift inwards because less is capable. Likewise, had a war destroyed or a disease that destroyed many of the labor units, the people of the economy, again, PPFs would shift inwards. And this is obviously undesirable. But um, PPFs can also shift outwards as resources get better or get more plentiful. Um, so if there is more land, if there is more labor, the population increases. If there is better labor, the population becomes more skilled. Then the potential output of the economy will increase and the PPF will shift outwards. We might occasionally see a shift only along one axis. So going from our original PPF to, say, this PPF, we see that more is now capable of being produced in the bread industry, unaffected the steel industry. So maybe this is something specific to bread, a new way of making bread, which is more efficient, stretches the resources further, more bread can be made. But steel is unaffected. This is still desirable for the economy. Um, so I think that's covered all, everything with PPFs. Uh, Thank you.